Alright guys, I don't even know where to begin or preface this video other than to say that today's conversation is around the audio performance of HomePod 2, which was released in early February, versus HomePod Mini versus its direct competitor, the Echo Studio, and how it fares against other competitors such as those from Sonos, Bose, Sony, and even my rather expensive 7.1.4 home theater system powered by a flagship Marantz AVR system. So I guess uh, diving right in. So I've had HomePod 2 now for about, uh, I believe, two weeks. And so far with a single speaker, I have been thoroughly impressed. I've done a whole bunch of critical and non-critical testing in sort of a controlled room environment, such as this home theater room, as well as in other spaces that I use for ambient fill or non-critical testing to get a sense of how well the speaker performs in different environments. And I'm pleased to say that whatever tuning that Apple has done from the version 2 over the version 1, that they've taken all the great aspects of the original version and have tweaked them to make the version 2 that much better, despite the fact that Apple has actually deleted two microphones and two tweeters out of the new version. So um, my biggest qualm with the original version uh, is that it was rather bass heavy and the mid ranges were a little bit lacking and the top end lacked a tad bit of sparkle. It sounded really good, but it just didn't blow my socks off of me. And so six months after buying the OG version back in 2020 that I promptly sold it instead a favor of the Echo Studio instead because the Echo Studio did 85 to 90 percent of what the OG HomePod did at less than half the cost and it had a lot of similar capabilities if not more capabilities if you start talking about uh, sort of the smart uh, Alexa integrations as well as integrations with third-party streaming services so this is by far the best all-rounder performer for compatibility and it does like 90% we'll say of what HomePod OG could do, um, which is why it has a place in my home. Now, as far as comparing it to his little sibling, the Mini, let's be real here, there's really no contest between the large version versus the small one. Um, the Mini is here because I still think that the Mini uh, allows people that are interested in buying into the HomePod system to be able to try it out and get a sense of what Apple's speaker systems can do. And these are very capable. Despite its diminutive size, it actually does pack quite a bit of punch. Just keep your expectations realistic, knowing that it's not going to hit really low bass and nor is it going to you know, produce the best mid ranges or the best highs because it's got a single three inch driver inside. What would you expect? However, the focus here is about HomePod 2 and why I think it's a real great option even compared to my full-blown Atmos home theater system, namely the tuning, right? So we've already said that the bass, mid-range, and highs are improved, but what I really like about using a HomePod is the fact that you can use it as on its own or you can pair it with multiple ones, which by the way, any of these speakers that are being featured here really should be paired at the minimum in a stereo pair. The difference is profound. The soundstage, the dynamic sort of range and audio extension, if you will, and the spatialness of the sound is enormous. It's not two times better, it's more like 10 times improvement when you go with a dual sort of speaker setup. So big recommendation on doing that. I was never a believer until I actually bought two HomePod 2s and then played them and just had my socks blown off. And since then, I've added you know, two HomePod minis, two Alexa Echo Studios um, to the mix. And I've done a whole bunch of listening and my thoughts on the sound performance still hold true that the HomePod 2 is truly the best sounding stereo pair that you could possibly buy for 800 Canadian or less. So as far as um, why this is better, well, home theater, for example, right, I've got this nice setup in this room with some very decent equipment, huge 16 inch sub, you know, flagship around AVR, some decent quality tower speakers for my fronts and my side surrounds and ceiling speakers and of course the movie experience is awesome however the sound stage in which the optimal listening position is to be in is very limited if you will if i turn on music i can definitely tell what is the left and the right speaker and then sort of if you're off axis that the sound isn't quite as immersive um, as it would be when you're listening to a pair of home pods because 
unlike HomePods, my home theater system, once it's been calibrated, right, that there is a certain spot that you need to sit in to get the best sound experience. Whereas this, you can move the speaker around anywhere in this room and it will self sort of listen to itself and calibrate and adjust its acoustics to match the room's, I guess, acoustic characteristics. So that's a big benefit. It sounds really good when you're sitting on the couch and it sounds really good if you're sitting in a corner of a room with your back turned to it. And that's what makes HomePods so magical. And that's not to say that the Mini or the Studio can't do that. The Studio actually has built in computational audio acoustic adjustments as well, but it just doesn't seem to be nearly as effective or refined as the one built into the HomePod full size. HomePod Mini, unfortunately, doesn't even have computational audio built into it. But again, because of this type of speaker, it's not really in the same league as these ones. Um, but HomePod 2, um, I, I, I listen to rock, I listen to classical, jazz, right, uh, EDM music, and it just does such a good job of providing the right balance of, of sound. It's not too bass heavy, the highs are not fatiguing like some of the speakers like say a Sony soundbar for example, and the mid ranges aren't necessarily bloated like say how a Bose system might be. And even this Echo Studio, despite me loving the speaker a lot, I find the bass on this rather uncontrolled and a bit bloated and, and bottom heavy. And so that's not my preference in listening to music. Again, if you're comparing it to my full blown system, of course you're gonna get a wider range and better um, uh, dynamic range with a home theater system with multiple speakers and a lot of amplification power behind it. But the point of the matter is, is that my home theater system is breaking into the five figure mark, whereas a HomePod paired with a equivalent Apple TV 4K first gen or better, right, can behave like a pseudo home theater system and provide you some Dolby Atmos effect for less than a thousand dollars. And while I'm not fully sold on the Atmos effect with the Apple TV 4K, that it does okay in smaller spaces. I actually did try it and followed Apple's sort of placement specifications or recommendations, and sure, sure enough when you're watching Atmos enabled movies that you do get to some degree a surround effect. I'm sure if you added more HomePods to the mix that it would sound better, but for a stereo pair, it does a remarkably good job at sort of beam forming sound to the appropriate space in a room. So again, Echo Studio can do that, it just doesn't do it as well. So, which is why this, my former favorite here, which in my opinion was better than the OG HomePod, has been taken away and the crown is given to the HomePod 2. Now, I'm not gonna provide you some sample audio in this video because of copyright reasons. It'll be in a separate video. Keep in mind that I don't have a high-end microphone. I'm being, it's being recorded on an iPhone 12 Pro Max as well as a pair of AirPod Pro 2s and that's the best that I've got unfortunately. But it'll give you a sense of the sound signature differences between these different speakers and even my home theater setup. Now, uh, to touch briefly on uh, other speakers that are not in this video, Sonos Play 1, Sonos Play 5, uh, Bose soundbar from Costco and a Sony 900 series um, soundbar. This will destroy a Sonos one, hands down. Don't even, there's no competition. You could put in like three Sonos, four Sonos Play speakers in the one series and they just don't sound nearly as good, clear or transparent as the HomePod 2s. Sonos Play 5, a little bit different. The Play 5 definitely has better extension. It plays louder, it hits deeper because of its, of its design. But what's interesting is that the Play 5 costs considerably more and it starts to break down in terms of clipping and clarity and distortion when you start pushing the amplifier past the 60% mark. So again, if you're talking about the best all-rounder speaker that can be driven clearly from 1% to 100%, the HomePod series of speakers, especially the full-size version, does this phenomenally well. Um, and again, need I mention transparency and airiness to the sound. Right, much like an electrostat or a piezoelectric speaker, or a ribbon tweeter for that matter, this really reminds me of that type of sound, obviously on a lower level, but very similar type of sound signature. So I really enjoy that a lot and why I love this so much. Um, I love the fact that the sound stage on these speakers is huge. You can place them anywhere and the room just sounds good. Right? You just you get into the music when you listen to HomePod. I don't necessarily get into music unless I'm sitting in a critical listening position with my full-blown system. Similar sort of sentiments around the Echo Studio. 
the sound stage is really wide and spacious and good, but it just doesn't quite have the detail that the speaker offers. And HomePod Mini as well, HomePod Mini, ambient fill sound, or a wonderful TV speaker replacement when paired with the Apple TV 4K or better. Um, speakers in TVs nowadays are awful. They're like this big. So upgrading to a pair of HomePod Minis to augment your TV speaker sound system, amazing and well worth it and cheap buy-in. You can buy these for 100 bucks USD each, plus an Apple TV 4K, and now you've got a whole, uh, a very good sounding TV system for under 400 bucks uh, American. So really good deal there. Um, so the other thing too with HomePod is that, uh, of course, there we can't talk about HomePod without a bit of Siri integration there. So Siri uh, was really stupid back in 2018. It's equally stupid today but just a little bit more capable because now there are more HomeKit devices on the market today. And the fact that the latest HomePods now also support a platform called Matter, which is sort of a more open, more o compatible platform for all smart devices to interact with each other. So maybe one day you won't need to have a Google Assistant or Alexa or HomeKit enabled device. You just need to get one that supports Matter and everything will just work with these. So now, I've talked a lot of great things about HomePod, right? And ultimately, who should be buying these? Well, Apple fanboys, of course, because this is a complimentary accessory product to an existing accessory product from Apple. So if you are an iPhone user, an Apple Music subscriber, then naturally a HomePod makes sense. Conversely, if you own an Apple TV, then you would use this as your home theater or your TV speaker replacement. And you sort of tie that all in together into that ecosystem. Who shouldn't buy these? If you're not an Apple user, don't even look at HomePod. There are great speakers, but you'll never get them to work right unless you are owning an Apple iPhone at the minimum to get this to work. Versus something like an Echo Studio, you can be an iPhone user, you could be a Spotify subscriber, you could be a Pandora subscriber. All of those services just work flawlessly. It has the best third-party integration out of any smart system that I know of, which is why I have the Amazon product in my home. The catch 22 though with this is that they say Amazon does listen on these devices to try to do targeted marketing to your household, which I have confirmed it does in fact do. And had Amazon not done that, I think I would have continued to really love this product a lot. However, privacy is a bit of a concern to me. So all my primary rooms now are outfitted with a HomePod mini or eventually one day full size HomePods. So there you guys have it. If you guys like my video, give me a thumbs up. If you have any recommendations or any questions regarding these speakers, put them in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Also check out the video links. I'm gonna show you guys as best as I can sort of the differences between those speakers. And you know, uh, consider subscribing to the channel because it's subscribers like you that really help make this channel possible. Thanks for watching.